in diabetes, the goal here was to try to understand the genes that they contribute to diabetes. Now here, as I mentioned, diabetes is a problem of tremendous importance in Mexico. Uh, it is important in many different countries, but uh, of, of special importance in Mexico and parts of Latin America. But most of the studies to date have been done not in the Latin American populations, but in European populations. And there have been good and extensive studies in European populations that have pointed to particular genes. But no one had done a major study here in Mexico to ask, could we find different genes, genes that might not be detectable for whatever reason by studying in Latin America, than the genes that would be detectable in Europe. And so this joint collaboration between Mexico and the US assembled uh, a large collection, more than 9,000 individuals of Mexican and Latin American origin, either living here in Mexico or of Mexican origin having just moved to Los Angeles, for example, and began to use the powerful tools of genetic mapping, mapping millions of genetic variants on these individuals. And although it is early days in the project, what I can tell you is that that initial hypothesis that it would be possible to discover things in Mexico that had been missed, that had not been discovered elsewhere in the world, is turning out to be true. It is clear that the study of diabetes in Mexico is going to add significantly to our knowledge of the genes underlying the disease, and I think very likely important pathways in that disease. Uh, this work is being written up by the, the joint team, and I am very excited to, to see the progress they are making. It is still early days in the project, many more samples to be analyzed, but it is clear it is a very productive project. Um, the team also took on what might be considered a simple problem, a simple Mendelian disease, a one-gene disease of the sort that people think yeah, should, should be extraordinarily easy to find, and often is. But we took on a disease of some interest involving kidney failure that had gone unidentified for 14 years, despite being mapped to chromosome number one in the human. And uh, we took that as something of a challenge, that if this disease had eluded capture for 14 years, we might learn interesting things by taking it on. And I should say that the project has succeeded. It has indeed identified a mutation for this particular disease. But in fact, it required uh, bringing together a wide range of tools, and the mutation was hiding in a dark alley of the human genome, a place that is very hard to find and very hard to get to, but even when you get there, it's very dark, and it was necessary to find the mutation deep in this region that's, that really is not easily cloned and not easily sequenced. But once the mutation was found, uh, has given rise to much insight into the basis of this disease. And I think it may teach us general lessons about many other Mendelian diseases that have not yet been cloned, that there are still important tricks about finding even the simple Mendelian diseases in the human genome. So the project set out to study three areas and see if it could engage in significant gene discovery in cancer, in diabetes, and kidney disease. And in all three, uh, the team has produced really exciting results and given rise to papers in international journals. 